If you're a fan of the not-so-noble art of internet pugilism known as the comment section, you've surely seen people heaping praise upon or simply scorning raw or JPEG imagery for this or that reason. All of this to-do stems from the virtues of shooting either raw or JPEG images or on the software side of things, whether you should edit your images as 16-bit images or if 8 bits is enough. Now, if that sounded like some kind of digital foreign language to you, it kind of did to me too, and I'm supposed to be doing this stuff for a living, so let's try to sort all of this out. Your decision will determine how deep a quality your images will have thanks to this little thing we call bit depth. Now, because my channel deals more with Photoshop than actually shooting photos, we'll focus a little bit more on that, but the concepts we cover here, they apply all across the board. To understand why bit depth is this important, we need to look at how it actually works. Bit depth will determine how much information your image will carry. You can think of it as an empty city building. For example, your standard JPEG image, it's an 8-bit image, and any 8-bit image carries 256 levels of color and tone that Photoshop can push or pull or play with. This is great, but when you use Photoshop to recover an underexposed image, or you push the pace of your image while creating some crazy photo manipulation, you push these tones around and you're going to lose some of them. Now, if we have an 8-bit image and we end up losing, let's say, 50% of the tones, we're left with only 128 levels of color and tone in that image. This loss of information will typically manifest itself in banding. This is where we see literal stripes of color with semi-jagged edges forming across the image, generally the parts of the image that have a lot or vast expanses of the same color, and just a general loss of quality across the board. Needless to say, not a good thing. A 16-bit image, however, contains 65,536 levels of color and tone, eh, give or take a few maybe, and if we lose 50% of those colors and tones in that image, we'd still have over 32,000 levels of color and tone that remain. This means we'd keep our smooth colors, we'd keep our edge details, our colors and hues for much longer, our dynamic range. All of this would stick around much longer than your typical 8-bit image. And in keeping with the empty city building analogy of earlier, an 8-bit image would be like a 256-foot tall tower, but a 16-bit image would be over 65,000 feet tall. That would be a building 12 miles tall, or think of it as 24 Burj Khalifas, all stacked one on top of another. So why not just open any old JPEG as a 16-bit image in Photoshop? Well, because when you shoot a JPEG image, you're only capturing 8 bits of information. When you shoot in your camera's RAW format, you will capture usually 12 or 14 bits of information. Wait a second, did I just say 12 or 14 bits? We'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later, but see, by using Photoshop's 16-bit mode, you open up a space or a tall enough tower that can handle up to 16 bits of information. So even if you load your 8-bit JPEG into a 16-bit workspace, you'll still have those original 256 levels of color and tone. They're just sitting in a much bigger workspace, if you will. Whereas a raw image will be able to expand its full 12 to 14-bit goodness into the space of a 16-bit workspace. Now, before we get deeper, let's cover the boring stuff, the math. What about this 12 and 14 bit stuff? Depending on the camera that's producing the raw file, you may have different bit depths. You're going to have to refer to your camera manual or wherever you get your technical information about your camera for what exactly you're going to get out of your raw file. You can determine the levels of color and tone that your camera will produce in its raw file based on its bit depth by solving 2 to the power of x, x being your bit depth. Example. An 8-bit image, what's 2 to the 8th power? 2 to the 8th power, simple Google search lets me know that it is 256 levels of color and tone. Hey, we know that's what we get in an 8-bit image. Now, a 12-bit image, 2 to the 12th, is 4,096. 2 to the 14th for a 14-bit image, 16,384. And 2 to the 16th for a 16-bit image, 65,536 levels of color and tone. My, oh, my. Now, as a quick callback, if you've overexposed your image and only 25% of it's usable, that JPEG has only 64 usable levels of tone left. But even a 12-bit raw image, the one with 4,096 levels of color and tone, 
would have 1,024 levels of tone left, four times what you even began with in the JPEG. Now, getting back to Photoshop, if you open a 12 or 14-bit image and an 8-bit workspace, all those levels of color and tone have to be sort of crushed together into a mere 256 levels of color and tone so they fit into that 8-bit workspace, into that 256-foot-tall tower. And in this, a big part of why you shoot in RAW will essentially be wasted. Now, there are some other advantages to shooting RAW. We're not really going to get into those here, but the 8 12 or 14 bit image, they can all fit within the 16 bit mode and you can play with all those levels of color and tone that that image has to offer. But the 16 bit image would have to be compressed quite a bit to fit in an 8 bit workspace. It's possible, it works, it's just not ideal. It would be kind of like using a Lamborghini for driving school. It's possible and it's cool to have the flashy gear, but the car will never be pushed to its fullest potential and the real power of the car it would never be realized. So as you go up in bit depth, the capability of that file and its resilience, if you will, to be able to work with it and push it around in Photoshop or Lightroom or the Camera Raw Editor, well, it expands dramatically. So when should you shoot RAW versus JPEG? Or when should you edit an 8-bit versus 16-bit? That's not really the topic of this video. We're just here to talk about what bit depth is and a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes. There are a bunch of other factors that go into making that decision. Maybe that's another video for another day. Let's check out a couple of real-life examples of an image edited as a RAW file in 16-bit mode versus the same exact image as a JPEG edited as a standard 8-bit image and wait till you see these differences. So this first comparison is this shot of an apartment in Philadelphia that I took. I intentionally exposed it the way I did because I knew I could bring the sky down and I could bring up the interior in terms of light and the raw file would allow me to do that without compromising the overall quality of the image. And you can see I could sort of do it with the JPEG, but when I zoom in and take a look at the detail, you can see I'm getting banding across the sky. The dynamic range appears to be much less than the raw image. And just overall, it's not nearly as nice an image. Despite having the same exact settings applied to it, I'm getting what looks like a different image, a far less professional looking image. Certainly not one that I would want to deliver to a client. Now, this second image here is a simple high school track photo, and I really drove this image. My intention wasn't necessarily to make it look nice, but rather to just heap all kinds of change onto the image in terms of color and exposure and everything else, and really dive into the differences that come out of this photo. And we can see once more banding in the sky as we try to bring detail back to an overexposed sky. The colors are off, the dynamic range is off, Overall, the 16-bit version is much nicer and at 100% just looks much better. There's less fragmentation of detail. You get much less artifacting in the shadows and all across the image, generally the quality is better. Now, the third image here is another real estate photo where we're shooting through this living room area outside and I knew I didn't need to shoot an HDR image because I was shooting raw. So I knew if I expose it just, just perfect, I can bring the darkness up for the interior side of the photo and lighten that up. And I could bring the light outside down a little bit to restore some of the detail to the sky. And we can see here the 8-bit version, we flat out just do not have the same level of detail in the sky and the clouds. It's blotchy, the color and light outside, whereas the 16-bit image is smooth and beautiful and just perfect, ready for delivery to the client. Now, the fourth example I wanna show you is a raw photo. It was shot in camera as a raw photo. I opened one version as an 8-bit image and I opened the image a second time as a 16-bit image in Photoshop and I applied the same stack of adjustment layers with the same exact settings to both images and look at the difference. Look at the banding, the grain issues, all of the difference between these two images, both the same exact exposure from the camera at the same moment in time, everything's the same. Simply one is edited as an 8-bit image, the other as a 16-bit image. The difference is dramatic. Now, one thing that I should point out, you can take this 16-bit image and you can save it as an 8-bit JPEG and it will not automatically get all the banding and deterioration of detail that you have in this other 8-bit image. Photoshop knows that that right there, what we see in that 16-bit mode, that's what you want to save. You want your JPEG to look exactly like that and it will convert that to a JPEG and you won't lose all of the detail and smoothness of color and everything like that. Now, practically speaking, if you want to edit in 16 bits, you can shoot your photos in RAW, you would use the workflow options in the Camera Raw Editor and you would choose and set to open files in Photoshop shop's 16-bit mode. 
You can also make that switch in Photoshop in, under the image mode menu. You can flip back and forth from eight and 16 bits. There's even a 32 bit mode in there. But the one thing I wanna point out here is you can't expect to bring an eight bit JPEG into Photoshop, switch over to 16 bit mode and magically your image has 65,000 plus levels of color and tone. It doesn't work that way. You still have those original 256 levels of tone that your JPEG had. You don't automatically instill greater detail into an image that just doesn't have the data there. Oh, and one last thing. You also get many, many more colors. You make the jump from about 16 million colors in an 8-bit image to about 28 b -b 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 billion colors in a 16-bit image. It's really easy to get lost in just abstract numbers. So let's compare these crazy figures to something that we can all relate to, time. It takes six months to hit 16 million seconds, but to hit 28 billion seconds, it takes about 875 years. That's the difference between jumping back in time to Super Bowl 51 or jumping back to a time when Saladin was kicking some tail all across the Middle East, when Richard the Lionheart was doing his Lionheart thing from Normandy all the way to Jerusalem. And over in Paris, they were just beginning to build the Cathedral of Notre Dame. So with all of that in mind, I think the choice is clear. If your computer can handle working in 16-bit mode and not crash Photoshop with the frequency and intensity and passion of a backwater auctioneer, then without a doubt, it is in your best interest to work in the vaunted 16-bit mode.